Hi everyone, we're back to Physics 263 Astronomy for section two, and you will find all these contents with full details in the lecture notes, section two. And just as I'll do for all the following videos on the top of each of the slides or the images that I show you, I'll mention the specific subsection that we're talking about. So it's very easy to navigate if you print it or even if you have just a digital copy in front of you. And just to note that because the lecture notes have been produced just for you, quite a lot of pages from scratch, there might be typos or things that I fix. And I should thank you already for those of you that are sending them in and I will keep them updated. And in the first pages of the lecture notes, you might find when it was last updated. In principle, any changes will be very minor and just to do with typos but I would definitely let you know if it's something significant. Now for section two, this is the introductory section. We're going to do an introduction to astronomy and specifically how we can calculate distances, sort of the classical way of doing it, and also how we can use them to quantify our cosmic insignificance, and also the modern way of measuring distances and some introduction to the distance ladder. This is something you're also going to cover in Cosmology 1 if you do it, and that we're going to come back to once we cover even larger scale methods of measuring distances. So you know how this is gonna work. I'll try to appear in slides and guide you through the contents. Uh, if sometimes my ears disappear or my hands disappear, don't worry, it's just part of the process. An important question you can ask, of course, is, why study astronomy and astrophysics? And if you're definitely keen on doing particle physics, this might not be the topic you're most fascinated about, but hopefully by the end of it, your appreciation for astronomy and astrophysics uh, might be slightly, slightly better. I think one of the main reasons to do it is because, well, we can and we want to, and to answer the most fundamental questions that humankind has ever asked. It's great because we have access to the full universe, and also actually even almost infinite other universes that we can uh, generate in a computer. One of the, the important points is really to do with the fact that we can make the deepest and most fundamental questions about our origins and, and really everything. Now, it is true that astronomy really allows us to study a wide range of physical phenomena. This covers a wide range of temperatures, as we'll see from the coldest, I mean, not as cold as our record in Lancaster, but pretty cold, to some of the highest temperatures, especially temperatures around like supermassive black holes or some stars. And it's obviously not surprising that uh, we're going to mention or use all kinds of physics, all the way from gravity to atomic physics, relativity, nuclear physics. And when you get the other modules in astrophysics, this is going to be even more the case. And perhaps one of the coolest things is in astronomy and astrophysics, you actually get to deal with the effects and consequences of both dark matter and dark energy, which otherwise we probably would not realize they exist at all. For those of you that are more concerned with practical applications, um, just like you have in, in your lecture notes, astronomy and astrophysics also gives you a, a wide range of opportunities, such as employment, at the end, and also a lot of applications in industry. Now, for those of you that really enjoy particle physics, there's also good arguments for studying astronomy and astrophysics, because it turns out that even though the LHC, which you can, you can see above uh, right here, is the, the world's largest particle collider made by humans, actually the universe's largest, most powerful particle colliders are not made by humans, and they look much more like this that you can see here behind me. They happen when clusters of galaxies of hundreds, thousands of them actually merge head on and produce the conditions of essentially a particle accelerator. Particles get accelerated to really high speeds. They emit things that we can detect in, in the radio, like here, just on my background, but also they, they really heat up. So you can see this this emission here is X-ray. And it also means that uh, an astrophysicist like me can actually be on the cover of the Nature Astronomy with a paper about one of the largest 
particle colliders, which you can see on the background. And unfortunately, during Astronomy 263, we will not really have time to discuss these galaxy mergers. Uh, but in the future, if you study astronomy, it will definitely come up, especially of one of the best ways that people are using to try to constrain the nature of dark matter.